What's up, squadron? Aviation has given me a ton of amazing experiences. Good, good job there. Nice rock, high wing. <laughs> but more importantly, it's introduced me to a whole new family of friends. Like, dude, you're killing it. You're having a great day. I just never give up. Airport, and then, oh, by the way, I got car ice while I was flying through, so the engine started running rough. And I had to Join us tonight as we're clear direct for some hangar flying. I am Brian Dabrowski, and this is Super Aero Live. I was alive. I don't know. I've been alive. Okay. What's up, Av Geeks? It's the Christmas Eve, 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 which can only mean one thing. <laughs> it's time for an episode, special holiday extravaganza episode of Super Arrow Live. I hope you are all well. It's so excited to see you. I somehow squeezed into my ugly sweater. Look, it's got airplanes on it. It's got airplanes on it. It's it's totally topical. Uh, <laughs> gotta say hi to my friends in the chat. 72 Papas here. Jason Follis, Ken Dodson, Brian Turner's in the chat, everybody. Brad Bloom, Sarah Clucky. Ah, oh, Clucky, I know you've been trying to get to uh, one of the live shows. So great to have you there. Jeff Jensen, Jonathan Chrisman, the legendary. James Hyatt. Taking Off is here. So excited to see them uh, in the chat as well. Scarface! Scarface is here. James Hyatt, Krieger. Yeah, all the fam is here tonight, Krieger. That's right. Connie's even here. That's amazing. That's amazing. Mike is here. Fly Chucky Fly. Zach Sherman. Did I say Zach already? I'm just so excited to see all of you. And I'm sorry that uh, that I'm late. I went to plug in. Uh, to everything and it just stopped. The computer stopped working. And so you get it for a Mac. Macs aren't any, they're not oh, so great anymore. Uh, so excited to have you guys here. I was going to drink non. I had a little sip, you can tell. It's kind of gross. I was going to drink some non alcoholic eggnog tonight, but uh, some of you complained in the chat. So let's just go hard. I don't have brandy though, and I'm from Wisconsin, so that's a problem. So, like, how much do you think? Like, that is that enough is that an, that's probably enough <laughs> It'll probably kill me and i have nothing to stir it with down here in the basement so the rum's right at the top yeah rum sailor jerry pilot jerry we should get our own rum okay putting that down here first gotta say thank you to all of you for coming to check out the show tonight and i thought it'd be fun to kick it off with a throwback to last year when our good friend Chris Palmer came on. Uh, he was hoping to come on tonight, but couldn't. And uh, so, yeah, here's Chris Palmer. Get us all in the holiday mood. Twas the night before Christmas and out on the ramp, not an airplane was stirring, not even a champ. The aircraft were fastened to tie downs with care in hopes that come morning, they all would be there. The fuel trucks were nestled all snug in their spots with gusts from two zero at 39 knots. I slumped at the desk, now finally caught up, and settled down comfortably, resting my butt. When the radio lit up, with a noise and with chatter, I turned up the scanner to see what was the matter. A voice clearly heard over the static and snow called for clearance to land at the airport below. He barked his transmission so lively and quick, I'd sworn the call sign he used was St. Nick. I ran to the panel to turn up the lights, the better to welcome this magical flight. He called his position, no room for denial, St. Nicholas won, turning left on to final. And what to my wondering eyes should appear, but a Rutan built sleigh with eight Rotax reindeer. With vectors to final, down the glide slope he came, as he passed all the fixes he called them by name. Now Ringo, now Tolga, now Trini, now Bacon, on Comet, on Cupid, what pills was he taking? While controllers were sitting and scratching their head, they phoned to my office and I heard it with dread. The message they left was urgent and dour. When Santa pulls in, have him please call the tower. He landed like silk with the sled runner sparking. Then I heard, left at Charlie and taxi to parking. He slowed to a taxi, turned off of 3-0 and stopped on the ramp with a ho 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 ho. He stepped out of the sleigh, but before he could talk, I ran out to meet him with my best set of chalks. His red helmet and goggles were covered with frost and his beard was all blackened from reindeer exhaust. 
His breath smelled like peppermint, gone slightly still, and he puffed on a pipe, but didn't inhale. His cheeks were all rosy and jiggled like jelly. His boots were as black as a crop duster's belly. He was chubby and plump in his suit of bright red, and he asked me to fill it with 100 low lead. He came dashing in from the snow-covered pump. I knew he was anxious for draining the sump. I spoke not a word, but went straight to my work, and I filled up the sleigh, but I spilled like a jerk. He came out of the restroom and sighed in relief. Then he picked up the phone for a flight service brief. And I thought, as he silently scribbled in his log, these reindeer can land in an eight-mile fog. He completed his pre-flight from the front to the rear, and he put on his helmet, and I heard him yell, Clear! And laying a finger on his push to talk, he called up the tower for a clearance and squawk. Take taxiway Charlie, the southbound direction. Turn right 320 at pilot's discretion. He sped down the runway, the best of the best. Your traffic's a grummin' and bound from the west. Then I heard him proclaim as he climbed through the night. Merry Christmas to all. I have traffic in sight. <laughs> Just... I'm laughing because... I was searching for something. Look at the rum just sitting on the top. I have nothing to start with. It's strong. Mmm. And you guys are hitting me up in the chat about being a poser, being from Wisconsin, and <laughs> and not having any any brandy. And that's fair. Uh, also, thank you very much to Nathan Ballard. Ha! <laughs> in the in the chat or the super chat. <laughs> Uh, that is so epic, Nathan. Thank you so much. Uh, James Hyatt asks if this is if this is live. It is live right now. It's not pre-recorded. It's live right now. Uh, it's it's real. Uh, Anitra's here. Good to see you. Anitra. Eric's here. Good to see you. Uh, man, so so excited to have all of you here on a little holiday get together. I want to bring on the show. Uh, one of my friends who, I'm like, can I call him my friend? Uh, one of my friends who's, uh, who's I've met through all of this, and he had the most epic, epic uh, Christmas present delivered today. You probably know who it is. I'm going to bring him up here. Look, everybody. It's Brian Turner! What, what? Of course you're my friend. You're my best friend. Oh man! Well, my 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 best friend came home to my airport today. You're my second best friend. <laughs> I'm not so cool it's... enough to do the the ramen thing that you're doing. I'm drinking tea, so I'm uh, I'm not cool. No, you're super cool. I'm uh I'm concerned of how this is gonna end for me, but that was part of the joy of last of last year's Christmas holiday Hanukkah. By the way, Hanukkah. Folks who celebrate Hanukkah, Hanukkah came super early this year. It was like like it was right. It was like Black Friday. It was like bam Hanukkah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> someone's gonna bring me brandy. Connie, you're gonna bring me brandy. Sure, come on over. I'll let's do it. Uh, Brian, what happened to you today? Oh, why am I drinking tea? So uh, I don't normally drink liquor, but last night I was going out to Kentucky with a friend. And uh, Kentucky shuts down about 9 o'clock, and there was one place open called The Deuce, and we thought, we'll go in there for food. Well, The Deuce doesn't serve food, but it serves uh, fireball shots, and so this young man and I, uh, is that what you wanted to know about? That's why I'm drinking Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to know about. (laughs) Oh, man. Last night was rough. Yes, um, I bought a new airplane because I sold my airplane, and then apparently I sold it on November 22nd, and four weeks is as long as I can go uh, without an aircraft, and so... Somehow in that four weeks, I managed to, uh, I'm a prima donna, I guess, uh, frantically uh, freaked out about a bunch of different planes that didn't go well. And then finally, uh, I found this one and I, I, I kept trying to find reasons to not to not buy it, trying to find things that were wrong with it. I had multiple people look at it and everyone kept saying, yeah, seems good. And uh, so I bought it and then I flew it home today and I'm exhausted. I landed a couple hours ago, but uh, super, super excited. And uh, it's a weird because I flew it home with a guy, uh, and but I, I'm not I'm not checked out. He wasn't a CFI. He was just a he's a Comanche guru, and uh, so I can't fly my plane. I got to go find someone to come check me out in it. I have zero retract time. 
so so okay that i was gonna ask you about that like what what's that process like and by the way uh, i'm loading up some pictures right now it's a pretty bird it's yeah. a pretty bird um but but what's that uh what's that like what's the uh like look at there's you so the, dude my family's the best so uh my dad followed me on fly to wear and uh he uh, uh, he was texting me uh, throughout the fight a little bit, and then he called my my wife and my mom and the kids and everybody. So when I landed, my whole family's out there taking photos and video, which is kind of cool. But then the guy I was with was like, "Well, we need to go up, and we need to." Sh he wanted to show me some things with the propeller and some different types of takeoff and landings. And so I'm just sitting there, just doing laps around the pattern, watching my, my you know my family up on the side of the runway. But you know, it was it was it was awesome. That is awesome, and your family. You sent me this beautiful photo of you and your. First of all, I got to say, in this photo here, uh, you've got kind of a model pose. That's how I do it. Um, now that I'm a Comanche pilot, I want to look. I, I'm, I'm refactoring the whole channel. It's all going to be like poses and all that kind of cool stuff. It's going to be a little more dramatic. I love it. I love it. And then here's your beautiful family coming to celebrate with Dad, which is yeah, so awesome. That is that is why I have a Comanche because that group of people will no longer fit in a little Grumman. Were you just sitting on each other's laps before, or? Uh, so kids grow exponentially, Ryan. You'll learn this. <laughs> it's not linear. The boy there, <laughs> he was not that tall yesterday. Um, it's it's an exponential curve of growth. So last time we were all four in the Grumman together was probably a year and a half, maybe even two years ago. Uh, and that was uh, after that. I was like, we can't do this anymore. It's not. It's not safe. So, I, my Grumman quickly just became my toy, and uh, it's an expensive toy to just be my toy. And so now we've got a machine, and we've already got it. We're gonna go fly to Santa Fe in February in this plane and go, uh, go skiing. So, if Dude, it's, that if it's is a family so, toy. That is so great. I mean, I I guess what I'm curious about too is like, why? Let's talk a little bit about nerd stuff for a second. Uh, okay why the why this plane oh my god dude why not this plane so i was i really thought i was gonna end up with like a 182 or a bonanza and people are gonna hate this but then i flew a bonanza and i was like no i'm not i'm not doing i didn't like it um so we got 1200 pounds useful load we've got 90 gallons um 14 gallons per hour which is a lot um ceilings 20,000 feet so this plane is there relatively inexpensive for what it's capable of. Most planes that are capable of doing this are quite a bit more money. Um, the Bonanzas, the Debonairs, even right now the 182s. Um, so this plane will do anything I need it to do. And they're, they're, they're just, it's, it's kind of like the Grumman was. They're just not as popular as a lot of the other planes that are more common out there. So I, I hadn't really considered it. I'd flown in a couple. Um, and, I, and I enjoyed it or whatever. And then when I started looking for something to replace the Grumman, everyone said Bonanza and 182. And my friend Ed said, have you looked at the specs on the Comanches? When I looked at them, I was like, what's wrong with this? It's got, it's rated at 7.5 G's. Like, like why what? not? And so, yeah, um, th these, these things are incredible machines. Um, the downside is they don't make them anymore. So the insurance is really high. Um, I guess there was a flood in the factory, I was going to say a handful of years ago, well before I was born. Um, so they don't make them anymore. Um, and so that's that's part of why I think they're not as popular. But this this machine is an amazing machine. And I, I think I'm, I'm dumbfounded now that I know as much as I do about it that they're not more popular. They, they're awesome. Some, some, uh, <laughs> just thinking about, uh, just like looking at myself and it's, uh, I've been drinking too much He's eggnog already. Okay. No, uh, thank you. Uh, so a couple of things uh, folks are asking and commenting in the chat. Uh, Nathan Ballard says, good to see those millions of YouTube dollars being well spent. <laughs> yeah, I had to put them somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the, uh, the uh, Ryan is asking 14 gallons per hour at what true airspeed? Uh, I we actually didn't even look at the true airspeed today. Our indicator was 155. Um, so, and there's a whole chart in the POH which I've, I'm starting to read now, where you can, you know, 10 gallons an hour at these settings. So I'm, I'm going through all the different settings because today was the first day. Well, when I 
test flew the plane was the first time I'd ever touched the blue knob in my life. Uh, and I've always been intimidated and scared by it. And it's a non-event, which most things turn out to be. Um, I'm scared to death. I'm going to forget to retract the landing gear. We were in the pattern and I was like, I know there's an alarm, but we flew the pattern three or four times today and that alarm never went off. And I'm like, do you How mean bad put them do down have- or to pull them up? You think you're just going to always leave them down? Well, I asked the insurance company because the rates were so high because I have no retract time. I said, what if what if I just leave them down and never pull them up? Can I get a discount? And they, they said, no, that's not an option, which was disappointing. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm scared I'm going to forget to put them because, the, OK, being new at this, I think that the, the, the landing gear knob should just be this big flashing sign on the front of the. It's a little toggle like the size of like a, I don't know, a boost pump switch or something. And it's just like, oh, landing gear. There it is. No, I'm like. It, it, it needs to be it needs to be more dramatic yeah i feel, yeah it should be like pull pull this now often yeah. it should just uh, like beeping and screaming or auto deploy your wife is in the chat and people are saying nice things to her and she's well, also she, impressed. She, she, she let me buy a plane yeah uh continue to shower her with praise everybody uh, <laughs> well, mostly she's she's excited people are spelling her name correctly. Yeah, her parents uh, messed that one up big time. Yeah, we my youngest daughter we have a, a unique spelling of her name and and that's a problem. Her name is Emily, <laughs> but at like the doctor's office they'll be like Emily. It's Emily with a J. Emily. Uh, <laughs> so anyway. Uh, James Hyatt says you were doing 164 miles per hour on flight aware. There we go. And that was with a 500 knot headwind. I told you these things are amazing. Jason Fallis says gear down to go down. I I had several people text me that today. I'm, I'm writing all these things down. My whole panel is just going to be gear reminders. Like, and I'm still going to, I'm still going to be the guy who bellies it up. <laughs> well, I hope not. Cause that'd be kind of a drag. It'd be kind of a drag. I, suddenly my channel's gone. Like, I just disappear. I can't show my face anywhere. Liter- it'd be literally... It'd be literally a drag. Uh, if you do People do that, just make sure you put it... this video. Just put that... If you do wheels up, make sure you land it just right between the rows of the corn. <laughs> Inverted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I don't have a good segue to this. I sort of do. Have you always wondered, Brian, how Santa delivers all the presents? In a Comanche. No. That was a reverse reverse segue. (laughs) No, he doesn't. But I know someone who does. Would you like to see? Would you like to learn more? I was hoping you'd ask, Ryan. Okay, let's check it out. Hey, Ryan. Hey, everyone. My name is Ami, and I'm really excited to be back on Super Arrow Live. I appeared here during the summer a little bit and we're back it's the end of the year it's the holiday season and i'd like to share with you some history of the holiday season from the kelch aviation museum we focus on the golden age of aviation and here i'm going to be explaining to you um about this guy um this is santa as a young man he may look like one of the original airmail pilots but in fact um he he was the original airmail pilot if, if you know what i mean um and there's a very direct connection to Santa at our museum, if you'll just step this way. So in our archive, we have many rare items, and this is one of them. This is um, a flying suit. It may look to you like a regular flying suit, but it's actually the prototype Santa suit. Um, he didn't actually wear it because it's not fat enough, um, and it's not the right color, but it was the prototype, um, as was this hybrid helmet. Um, It sustained some wind damage, so we had to update that part. And then if you look at this ski, um, this is very important to Santa's round the world flight. Um, A lot of people think that he has a reindeer pulled sleigh, but that's ridiculous. Reindeer can't fly. So he flies a biplane, um, and this is a ski for it. Um, As you can see, it has this hole where the the wheel would go, so it can land on snow or on hard ground anywhere in the world very adaptable design and then right here you can see that we have santa's airplane um it may look like a steerman but it's actually a santaman um we put up some disguise like the end number and the logo during the rest of the year because we don't want like a lot of media attention in that respect anyway um you can see it's a signature red and we're getting it ready for the big big flight santa 
sits back here in this uh, really cozy cockpit. And then the, the, the presents go up here in, in the front compartment underneath the gas tank, and then he uh, throws them. So, um, if you'd like to learn more about the Golden Age of Aviation or about Santa's airplane or anything, we'd love to have visitors. Um, like I said, my name is Ami, and I'm from the Kelch Aviation Museum in Broadhead, Wisconsin. We are focusing on the Golden Age of Aviation. We have a lot of cool airplanes, and we have this direct connection to Santa. So visit us now at the holiday season or at any time of year. Have a good New Year! <laughs> that's, that how, awesome. that, that's how Santa does it. In a, in a Santa man. It makes sense now. It makes it a whole makes lot more total, sense. Because he can just whip them out of the open cockpit. Well, and the steerman's so fast. That's how he gets to everybody yes. in one night. They're, they're, I've ridden in one. It was. I, I should have bought a steerman. It's not. Uh, you should have. You can. That's the next one. Is it? It might be. Oh, there goes that. My logo what? just fell. Oh. <laughs> Uh, you, you can, you could, that could be the next one. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, I love that you, you, Santa rides in the back and he's got all the presents in the front and he just grabs them and whips them out. I almost just knocked a, a flag onto my head. Uh, he whips them out into the, uh, into the sky and they just land on the, on the houses in the chimneys. Right. And then roll conveniently to the tree. Yeah, and that steerman is instrument certified. Santa got an instrument rating. He has to have it because sometimes the weather's not always good on Christmas. Right. Yeah, open cockpit IFR is super, super it's... hardcore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> seriously, though, Ami was so nice to do that. I will tell you, folks, I, she, I wouldn't necessarily have, like, she uh, she did that overnight last night. Like, I texted her. I was like, hey, well, do you have any cool history things uh, in the museum about Christmas or any like historical tales about pilots and Christmas. And she was like, I got you fam. And at like 3 AM that video showed up in my Dropbox. And I was like, Oh, she went hard for us. So thank you, Ami for that. Uh, and we should have her on again. And yeah, if you're looking for something to do generous to do with your money, uh, go support the, uh, well, really right now you need to support the Brian Turner Comanche gas fund. But, uh, after that, you should throw some dollars at the Kelch Aviation Museum in Broadhead, Wisconsin. That was so kind of them to, to send that our way. And, and we really appreciate it. Our way. It's just me. It's just me here. People on YouTube channels, even if it's just like one person, they always say we, have you noticed that? It's cause you want to feel bigger than you are. We do. I mean, I do. We do. No, I, yes, we do. People do it in the plane too. You'd be flying solo and be like, we're cruising and such and such, or we want flight follow. Right. Everyone says we. It's kind of weird. Do you do, I do it? I don't feel like you do this. When I'm on my headset, I do a different voice. Do you do a different voice? I'll do an Irish accent sometimes because I'm probably going to screw up and I don't know. I, do you do a different, what, what voice do you do? Well, like I go, uh, Jimmy Stewart impression. No, like I'll be like, you know, this is me talking normally. I'd be like, oh, look at red traffic. Is like, I'm you, like, I you imitate a pilot. Yeah, I imitate a pilot. A really I, good friend funny, of mine, a good today. friend of mine pointed that out once. I, and she I, we was were right. Today from, from, from Kentucky, and I heard a guy, and I was like, I go, this is one of those pilots that's imitating a pilot. Uh, they, the, they insert the pauses and they talk with the, what's the voice crack or whatever they call it. Uh, yeah, that's. I have, I have a friend who does that, and I'm like, "Are you? What? What is that? Like, you don't talk does your, like that." What I've been thinking about starting to do is going every time I am on, like, like I will add the the add radio. The, add the... Yeah, <laughs> Cameraman Tower, Skyhawk, <laughs> seven three four, Unimore Victors, uh, five miles away with Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> So, so um, I, what's funny is I, the guy I flew home from Kentucky today with, he's a center controller. And yeah. um, there, was, there was someone who was on 1228, CTEF, and he called in and asked for uh, flight following. And I, I was like, dude, you have to. You have to be like, yeah, what's your uh, on-course heading and altitude? And like, just play along. But uh, we, 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 we almost didn't do it. Or we almost did it. And then we decided it was a bad idea. And then we thought we'd start canceling IFR on behalf of other planes in the area just to see what would happen. 
But I don't think following through on any of those ideas would really be smart. I love it. I say do it. So I wanted to ask you. I wanted to ask you a question. Can I ask you a serious question? But maybe, but maybe I already know the answer. Uh, oh. What What are you grateful for this year? My dogs. <laughs> uh, you know what? It's it's a good question. So um, you know, I even I even alluded. To, I talked to someone today, and I said, I know you know with the whole plane thing and the the drama and the prima donna stuff. Uh, and even in my last, I don't know who watches my channel, but my last video, you know, I, I put a pause in there to say, you know, I, I get that, that this stuff, it, it lo- the perception is like, I mean, who, who gives a rat's ass if you can't find a plane or you're having problems with your airplane and stuff. Um, I felt like it was really important to stop the video at that moment when I'm, I'm bitching about how great, you know, how hard it is to, I don't know, do this thing. Like I, I'm very grateful that my kids are healthy and that I don't have real I'll say real problems, but I mean, the things that matter are, are going okay for me. You know, I'm very grateful that I'm, I'm employed and my wife is employed and we're, you know, getting our kids, our kids have straight A's and, and like, <laughs> in spite of me, I don't know, somehow or another, like everything in my family life is going pretty well right now. Um, and so most of the things that I, I, I don't know, get irritated by aren't real problems. And I, I know the, that's not, the truth for most of the world. So I'm highly aware of that. And I'm highly grateful that the things that I, you know, say are problematic aren't, aren't really that problematic. So I'm, 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 I'm pretty, uh, pretty grateful for the things that are important going well in my life. That's really, that's really kind. Uh, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if folks, uh, in the, in the chat, Sorry, I'm having some technical difficulties here. I can't come back to you. So we had just, we're just stuck on your face. Oh. We're just stuck on your face. There we go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got it. Here I am. All right. There we go. I the oh, are you doing something funny finish. and I moved away? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That is, It's a reindeer. See, we've got to connect it back to the holidays. It's, it's a reindeer. Uh, I want. So here's what I was going to do. I wanted to give a little thanks to some folks right now. <laughs> in the context of you wearing that that head uh and i'm hoping the folks in the chat could you also i'm wondering one thing that you're grateful for this year would be cool for us all to share together as because we're this really cool sky family which i'm super grateful for and i'm wondering uh throw those in the chat uh i want to say thank you to a couple people one uh okay i'm gonna i can't be i can't be serious right now with you doing that with the, the horse head. I'm going to just put you away for a second. Okay. Oh, no, that's you. That's just you. Wait, we're, oh, there we go. There's me. <laughs> okay. I want to be, I wanted to express some gratitude to some people. <laughs> and, um, wait, is it just been on me the whole time? Yes. What is that? Okay, wait. I hit a button. That's even more hilarious. Here we go. There he is. Oh, my goodness. What a... I'm so fat fingered tonight. I'm so fat fingered. It's the rum. It's the it's the rum in there. Th- that whole thing. Yeah, look at that. I can't. I can't take you seriously, man. It's one of Santa's reindeer. Okay. So anyway, back to me. <laughs> so <laughs> so I wanted to say what I was thankful for. Thank you, Brian. What I everyone throw it in your in the chat. What you guys are grateful for, aviation or otherwise. Um, I got a couple people I need to say thanks to. First, I'm gonna say thanks to my friend, my YouTuber aviation friends. Like Brian's just like in the, I can see him in the green room just laughing his butt off right now. Um, people, a lot of people have been really supportive of the channel, and I really appreciate that. And a big part of that are some people I need to call out by name right now. These are the Super Aero Squadron members who've been with me, many of you since the very beginning. Uh, since even, like, first YouTube videos. Some of you were commenting on, like, the first YouTube videos I'd ever posted. And uh, I just want to say thanks. I'm going to name them out here. So Ryan Krieger, Kristen Dombrowski, that's my wife. Uh, Lynn Fraser, uh, my business partner, also very supportive. The Nobleman Barber Shop, they make me look this good for you guys. Uh, Barry Herwald, Pilot Annie, Nick Moore. A lot of these people have been on the show Michael Hyman's, I've never learned how to pronounce your last name, Michael. Osman Quadri, Outinside, Mikey Risky, 
Jonathan Chrisman, the nicest, most generous man in the world. Constance McCorkle, who is going to bring me some brandy. Nathan Ballard, 782 Papa, Jason Follis, Tom Trissell, Jacob Lindsay, Greg Hughes, Byron Bowman, Mike B., Robert Teherio. I hope I pronounced that correctly, Robert. Uh, Clayton Starwalt, Nicholas Lambert, Tango Juliet. Mm, that one hits a little hard. Uh, I kept them in the I kept them in the list because they were awesome. Uh, okay, <coughs> sorry. So uh, Tango and Juliet, uh, even from the big thing in the sky, uh, I'm babbling now. Uh, Bobby Kerr, Clucky, Nick Henke, Ken Dodson, Todd Johnson, uh, and then uh, uh, Anitra just joined today. So thank you very much, guys. Uh, so grateful for all the support that you guys have given this show, keeping it going. And then uh, separately, just super thankful and grateful for all the people who, um, who subscribe and share and like, and all that BS, uh, that really, really, really helps the show. Uh, everyone's saying quit, quit horsing around says 72 Papa. This is a serious show. Uh, so, so, uh, yeah, 33 minutes in, Ryan has lost dexterity and self-control. Oh, God. This is, uh, this is really good television. This is really good television. It's just uh, a series of you know, hats and masks. A series of hats and masks. Okay, I'm going to read some of these chats, and then we have another special guest that's waiting to come on. Uh, Zach Sherman says, I'm grateful to all the aviation YouTubers who keep me excited about aviation before I can start my flight training. Uh, that's really awesome. I saw something in here. Okay, Ryan Krieger says, thankful for health. Uh, both my parents had bouts of cancer this past year and are doing great. That's super awesome to hear. Uh, Sarah Clucky says, so grateful to meet most of you at Osh this past summer. Glenn says he's thankful for his friends. Uh, Brad, Brad just got his instrument rating. He says, the help and support of friends when pursuing new licenses. Uh, and then everyone else is saying to lay off the rum. Uh, Connie McCorkle says, my Sky fam, which is really great. Yeah, this is cool. I mean, this is a cool thing. I don't know. This show's kind of, the holiday show's a little bit, always a little bit of a mess, but I'm always excited just to hang out with my family one last time, my, my aviation family one last time before the new year. And uh, I was talking to, we do this Patreon thing. You come hang out with the Patreon thing every i hope you know you've been on camera this whole time uh you, you come on hang out on the zoom thing the patreon zoom yes call you're, after you're, show. If, if, if you guys are not uh so ryan's patreon i'll tell them ryan's patreon supporters all get invited to zoom meetings after uh these videos it is it is so the chat that's happening over there happens in real life after that it's a lot of fun it, sometimes it goes until one or two o'clock in the morning and people fall asleep. <laughs> sometimes Ryan falls asleep. I've definitely fallen asleep. That's a um, thing that's if, happened. If, if I don't know, go, go sign up for Ryan's Patreon and, and attend one of those meetings and you'll, you'll probably stick around. They're a lot of fun. Well, here, I mean, here's the cool thing about it. And this is something, I mean, I got to meet a lot of you guys at Oshkosh or whatever. One of the coolest, coolest things is that, ah, man, I really wish I had a spoon to mix that eggnog. Um, the, one of the coolest things is like, we, we talk well, these are like people we're just like, we're literally like a little family. Like we talk every week, we hang out everyone that's in the, in the chat here. Uh, we hang out every week. It's just cool to see you guys every week. Uh, student aviator says pass my private check ride today. Outstanding. Nice job. You awesome. got to change your name. Student aviator. It's not student anymore. Just aviator. Just aviator. Yeah. You good job. Good, good job. Uh, okay, so I have a I have a random special guest that uh, I was gonna bring on to the show. Uh, this is a, like a deep cut. So, though I was just giving thanks to all the people who've been around the channel since the very start, and I was talking to this person today, and I was like, oh, a couple guests could make it because either family stuff or whatever. So, like, I feel like I, all the pressure's all on Brian. And this person said, no, like, don't worry about it. I'll come on. And like 10 people will, will recognize me from the, from the video. So I'm going to bring, I'm going to turn us into three here. Good God. I hope this works. Probably hey, no. it's Lynn. 
Except your Hi. mic's not working. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, yeah. we can hear you now. And it also, I don't think I said 10 people would know who I was. I was like, will anybody know who I am? So go D. So Lynn, so Brian, this is Lynn. Hey, Lynn, Brian. Brian hey, Lynn, Lynn, nice to meet you. Uh, Hello. Yeah, everyone's like, go ahead, Super Arrow. Use your finger to point. So, uh, and use that finger to stir the rum, dude. Everyone in the oh, chat. Oh, use my you. finger to stir the rum, duh. Okay, <laughs> I'll do that in a minute, not on camera, because I'm gonna have to, like, yeah. So, Lynn, so for everybody, if you haven't seen it, Lynn was in, like, the first, like, breakout super arrow video. I'm the OG. One of the OG guests. She came on, she flew in the plane with me. I gave her, was it your first airplane ride? In that size of a plane yeah it was terrifying <laughs> you did really well though so you guys should go back and watch i like your hat by the way you should go Thanks. back I to get into the spirit yeah brian where's your hat i mean that dude's got a collection of hats and masks like on call ready to go i suppose who I is shouldn't. that that is speaking that's, of terrifying that's elf on the shelf dude elf on the shelf Oh, I thought that was like a big boy mask or something. It was made in China, probably by the same people who make the big boy masks. <laughs> so here's the thing. Lynn, everyone in the chat is is recognizing you. This is great. What? Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. So Oh wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna uh divert a second. Uh pilot goal sixty two says, I'm not a pilot yet, so I'm grateful for the content that pilots provide. Thank you, Pilot Goals. Go for it. Go get your thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, here we go. Brad Bloom he says, look, it's Lynn Spector Gadget. <laughs> That's right. We were, like, talking about roller derby names. Yeah. Right? I didn't yeah. end up being Lynn Spector Gadget. I went with uh, Brain World Smash and... Shaving the legs. Oh, yeah. Brian, do you Not even know what we're talking about? You know what you Have you randomly seen this one video on my channel? This is, like, a super deep cut. I, I don't know, but I'm gonna go look for it now because I'm getting very curious. No, no. It's, so the title is oh, inappropriate. It's easy, to find. it's easy to find because I came up with the show title for that, yeah. and it was Ryan's title for the show was "My First Time with Two Women." Yep. I'm not sure I've seen your specifically. <laughs> yep. Get in. Get in there. Get mad. Get in there and mix it up. Butter in the bread. That's right. Everyone's talking about butter in the bread. Okay. Because you had said that there was a guy who had that that line for what is it? A smooth landing? Yeah. You like butter the bread, and I was like, well, you got you have to have your own line, man. And like, what's smooth? And at the time, this was the before times, before the pandemic. I was like, my legs are smooth. Shave the legs. <laughs> and now that we're in like pandemic times, I don't know the last time I shaved my legs. Same. <laughs> Same. So here, Brian, so here's what I need your help with. Sure. Uh, here's what I need your help with. I need your help convincing Lynn, who's over here. Yeah. I need to convince Lynn to get her pilot's license. And I thought, what better person than the world's greatest pilot to do that? I do, I do on the website. Um, what, what's keeping you from getting your pilot's license? Here's the truth. I am really, I'm a bad car driver. Like, I'll admit it. I'm not attentive. I get distracted easily. And I'm like, okay, if I get in a car accident, chances are reasonably all right that I'm not going to die. And I'm like, if I get in a plane accident, I'm definitely going to die. What if I told you there was a manufacturer out there that makes aircraft explicitly designed for distracted people who aren't paying attention? Um, I'm intimately familiar with these serious aircraft. I think that would be a good fit. Um, you don't you don't even have to use the windows. Uh, everything is super easy. Like I don't know. I think if you took a test flight in a Cirrus, you probably probably wouldn't even know you were in it. Uh, you just text it and tweet, and they're doing whatever you do, and then suddenly you're somewhere else. I love the idea of flying a plane. I do. I think it's so cool. I loved going up with Ryan, but then I also remember watching Ryan's prep and like the checks and like he's super on it and like focused. And I'm like, 
serious, no prep, no checks, none of that, no drama. It's just, you just get in and go. It's, it's like being on an elevator. You get in it and then suddenly you're somewhere else. That sounds awesome. Yeah, that plane like, was that designed for you. I could do that. But like, how, but tell her how much on like, the airplane. Well, like, tell her how much like a tell her how much a Cirrus costs. No, you don't. Don't look. Don't think about the money. <laughs> if, if people thought about the money, there'd be no pilots. Uh, the cheapest ones are about three hundred thousand dollars. But you probably have that oh, in your couch cushions. Is that all? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Get two of them in case you crash one. You said you're prone to crashing things, so you want to back up. <laughs> Uh, but no, I would I would say that's the way to go. You really don't have an excuse not to do it. I, I, I would love to do it. I think it would be so fascinating. I just, yeah, I worry. You know, do you guys remember way back when that like seven-year-old girl was going to fly a plane across America? She was on like all of the news shows. Do you know she what died. I'm talking about? And like on day two, she crashed and killed everyone. That's because she was being pressured to fly around the world in a plane by people who. Shouldn't yeah, have that's been not about airplanes. That's about crappy parenting. I I will never pressure you to fly around the world, and especially at seven. I don't know how old you are now. Um, I'm eight now, so I'm okay, probably you'll be fine. Old Wait, be fine. and if if I, the money's an issue, like I, I fly my dad's Cirrus. Does your dad have a Cirrus? Can you just fly his? That would probably do it. <laughs> is that not? Is that not how everyone does it? I don't know. I that's think you should. I think. <laughs> I, I think you should go take a discovery flight tomorrow or now. Have you been drinking? Did you? Are you okay? I can't take I can't take you for eight hours right now, but I could take you tomorrow. We could Legal. skip work. We could skip work, and I could. T- Why well, I, I can't actually take you? Don't tell anybody except the entire internet. I I missed the op. I have to go get my medical. I, how far How far into airplane training to be a pilot? Before you're like controlling it, like they I feel will. like I would be on board for like, tell me what's going on, teach me some stuff, let me you know absorb all of this, but don't give me control of anything. Day one, before, the very first that. thing you do is usually take off the airplane and they land it. Yeah. Now they're they've got their own steering wheel over there, and so their 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 hands are going to be like right there, so they're not going to let you screw up. Okay. Um, yeah, like when you were learning to drive and they had the emergency brake on their side, my driving instructor rode that brake hard. Yeah. Well, your your flight instructor will probably be doing the real work. Okay. And you'll be like, I'm doing it. But then you'll be like, I can do this, even though you, he was doing the, the most of the work. But then you'll want to go back for a second lesson and a third. It's like crack. After a while, you just don't have any money and you're flying all the time and it's okay. Oh, man. I do think it would be fun. I do. It is fun. Are you in your basement? Yeah, I thought that's where we did this, Ryan. Only your basement it's... looks cool. Mine looks like crap. What's a basement? I live in Texas. We don't have those. I like the huge pooper pipe right above your head. Oh, yeah, right there. That's the sack. <laughs> Love it. Thankfully, nobody's flushed for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like, when's the last... Do you mean... Is there... Is it like full? Yeah, shit or full. <laughs> <coughs> I don't want a basement anymore. You don't need a basement. Well, call back that Christmas movie. Shit or full. Oh man, so much for advertiser friendliness. Uh, hey, you guys talk again. I gotta make. I forgot to mix my rum with my finger. Can you? Can we talk? Can we talk? But we just on the screen. It's just you stirring a drink with your finger. <laughs> Because ultimately, it's the licking the rum off the finger yeah, afterwards. you guys just go. I'm just going to do that. Yep, there you go. <laughs> oh, it's so... Oh. You should no. have had, like, your, your wife come in from off-frame and just her finger stir the drink. <laughs> no, no. Some other finger. Okay, now oh, you're just sticking that's... your finger in there. You're not no, even stirring. No, I, yeah, I got I to gotta go. I can't do this on camera. I now have some like, modesty. No, wrong one. There, no, <laughs> wrong one. There we go. Okay, I got it. Got it. So I I was listening before coming on, Ryan, and you called out your friend who told you that you put on a voice to sound like a pilot. And that was me. Was that a knife? Did you just hold up a knife? Oh, no. So, well, 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 I was waiting to go on. I have been actually wrapping Christmas presents down here. All right. 
Better late I than never. I quickly learned that the holiday bag is the way to go. Yeah. Oh, I find the holiday wife is the way to go. I don't, I don't even, I don't, everything's going to be a surprise to me under the tree. Right. I know. Really? I'm like wrapping everyone's gifts, except for the ones that are for me, which I fully anticipate will just be handed to me in an Amazon box. Yeah. It's the thought that counts. Yeah. Right? I, just I just wrapped wanna, this in my hands. I just want to say real quickly that like totally worth mixing it with the finger, like actually drinkable now. And your finger tastes good. My finger it's a little that was a little gross there was a lot of we had a lot of meetings today i shook a lot of hands today so there was a lot of hand washing and a lot of like uh hand sanitizer and so that's now in in there anyway now that i'm thinking about it we did shake a lot of hands today and i did not sanitize properly but i'm not stirring my drink with my finger either so i'm probably fine. no but if you shook hands and the same people that he shook hands with then you just stirred his drink that's how that works oh. <laughs> Thank you for doing that for him. Uh, Connie says, where is this going? Yeah, it went weird. <laughs> uh, some other good comments, though, in here. Um, oh, okay. It sounds like you are the new host of Super Air Alive, Lynn. Uh, and I know nothing about airplanes. I was listening no. to you guys talk and like throwing out some lingo, like numbers and letter combinations. And I'm like, shit, I don't know anything. Well, you talk Ken like a pilot. Yeah, <laughs> clearly. Ken Dodson says, God, I love her. Uh, Zach Sherman says, don't worry about the swearing. Advertiser friendliness matters before like 30 seconds. That's it. Oh, was I uh, not supposed to? Where, Ryan? No, it's fine. That's like number three. I'm not counting. Lynn, okay. uh, Lynn, Ryan Krieger says Lynn is the best. Mike from New Zealand says Lynn, you are amazing. <laughs> and Flying Iowa is wondering if mixing rum with a finger is code for something. No, it was literally me mixing the rum. <laughs> 72 Papa. No. 72 Papa. Um, this show is going down the tube. I'm on Urban. The tube behind um, Lynn's head. The tube behind <laughs> Lynn's head. Uh, so okay. To get back to airplanes though for a second. Oh, yeah, so balanced. okay. Keep. I want to. I want this to happen because my goal. So Lynn and I own a company together, and one of my goals is to somehow convince Lynn that our company should buy a plane. I was thinking like a Pilatus. Good, good starter. Yeah, she's going to love that. A good starter one. Yeah, I think that would be good. We have a lot more videos to sell to get there. Uh, but I'm wondering if you could just, like, you just you just upgraded from, like, a more, like, uh, <laughs> leisure plane to, like, a seriously go-fast plane. Yeah. Is Are you going to use it to, like, do stuff? I, I am actually. I had that conversation gonna... with with my wife before I bought. It. I said, "I want. I don't. I want to use this to do stuff." And she's like, "What kind of stuff?" And I was like, "That's a question Lynn would ask." I'm gonna fly it because I'm a pilot. Can I ask what, you? What do you mean? Can I ask a new say... question? Yeah. So you know, are you like you were in? I don't know. You said like a starter plane or something, and then you're like, now nah, then you upgraded to like a super fast plane, right? When, where do jets fit in? Like, when is it a jet? Oh, this is, I actually, this is better than a jet. So, uh, but jet, cool. jet, for it's jets, you have to be, first off, you have to have the voice that Ryan pretends to have when he's flying in order to fly a jet. Um, and jets, jets are for, uh, for companies like you guys, the Pilatus he's talking about. If you wanted to like not start with an entry level Pilatus, you guys could do the jet route. And carry all of your camera equipment. I bet that's a lot of GoPros or whatever you guys use to shoot your videos. Um, I think uh, I think jets are are for really, really, really rich people. Do you have to fly it differently? Yes. No pants. <laughs> that sounds like the one for me. Yes. <laughs> that is in our company handbook. Uh, so. It's the only uh, reason so, you started the company. Is, no, we don't have to wear pants to work. Uh, so what, what is your question, God, I, My wife's not watching. So a uh, <laughs> couple, couple comments. <laughs> my wife laughing in the other room. She's watching. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Christman says, why not a TBM? TBM would also be great. Mike Beatty says, uh, Lynn could learn in a Pilatus. Sure. Uh, but, but then Brent points out, 
PC-12, no parachute. And you have to wear pants. Yeah. It's in the POH. Do yeah. most planes have parachutes? They, yeah, the one, the good, the good ones do. The ones for Why rich do people we have do. A parachute? No. <laughs> no, par parachute planes are are either. It's interesting. They're either on like planes for really rich people, like Brian, or they're Brian's, on Brian's Brian. dad, or <laughs> or on uh, like ultralights. There's, it's like, it's like, there's no like middle ground. It's either like rich people planes or like grassroots aviation. Like probably gonna die, or just not paying attention. Those are the two people that get parachutes. Right, right. I should probably I have a parachute then. For both of those reasons, probably gonna die because I'm not paying attention. Mm. <laughs> so here's the here's the problem: is Ken Dodson says. Put Lynn on Super Arrow Live full time and your subscriber count will get high enough that you will have to worry about advertisers. But I am clearly not a subject matter expert unless I bring in other aviation noobs who appreciate the dumbass questions I'm asking. That's the fourth. I think fourth. that's a good angle. That's the fourth. Sorry. <laughs> It's fine. Um, so, so maybe. A, what do you think about a Cirrus Vision jet, Brian? Should we get one of those? No, and that's the thing. I mean, I think they're they're at least they're they're so they're ugly, but they also don't carry much, and they don't. They're just. It's not a good product. Like for two million dollars, like I thought they were like can, five million dollars. Maybe even the your, the circles you travel in, but in my poor poor folk, Cirrus Vision jet friends is two million bucks. Um, oh, no, no. When they first came out, they were like $2 million. But I think, I mean, I think it's like two people in bags and their useful load is less than, I think, the plane that I just bought. I, 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 I'm I, not sure what the draw, well, it's the parachute, right? That's what it is. And, and the, the parachute on the Vision Jet, on the Vision Jet, the parachute comes out of the nose. I'm not even making this up. It comes out really? of the nose. And just like in this, the regular series, it's rocket propelled so for that one brief moment before you crash the plane you get to fire a rocket like a fighter and i think that's why people buy it but you when you're in a fighter jet you don't reach up here and go Tsh, to fire the missile flown a lot of fighters have you no no how does do you know this go, does your parachute go like an airbag or do you have to deploy it or is it you have does to the plane, does the plane go oh shit sorry ryan it's right. fine. Wait, let's just I give. I've given up. It's all breakfast club now. Excuse me, sir. It was five. <laughs> I mean, because it's not like you're deploying your airbag in your car. But I guess that's impact. That's impact makes it go. But you're the, so the plane's not smart enough to be like mm, time for the old parachute. Oh, she's checked out. She's distracted. Let's deploy right? the shoot. No. <laughs> I mean, Brian, you've you've done that at least three times. So you should. You're more equipped to answer this conversation than me. You uh, have three the, parachute times. I, do I have three parachute times? I don't know. I've never used. I honestly, I took the parachute out and replaced it with an, an, an anvil because I'm a man. Uh, no, what, <laughs> the, oh, take that. Um, no, the parachute. You have to pull a, a handle. And you have to, it's, it takes 45 pounds of force. You have to really like you're not going to accidentally do it. Um, or if you're very weak, then sorry. No, uh, they do have some envelope protection things in there. That's not what you're thinking. Not like this kind of envelope. Um, but they, there's some some things in there. Like I think the Cirrus will detect that if you've the, the newer ones, like if you've passed out, it'll look, like bring you to an, an altitude where there's oxygen and stuff like that. If you're not over a mountainous area or something, like there's some smart things in it. But you you have to decide to pull the handle to make that parachute come out. You, and that's you only want, when you're crashing. Yeah, because you wouldn't want like if you dozed off, you don't want the thing to interrupt your nap by deploying a chute and messing up your plane ride. You know how nice it is to sleep on a plane. No, so you have to you have to. Move it. So. <laughs> Sorry, that just hit me. You know how great it is to sleep sleep on a plane. It's nice, but here's the thing. This is kind of interesting. You mentioned this. There are seat belts you can put on aircraft. It sounds, mm -hmm. it sounds made up, and it's got an airbag in the seat belt. Um, so at that's impact, a, that's a real it, thing. It's a real thing. I don't know. I mean, really, I, I assume an impact in an airplane. For the most part, it's probably it, but I don't know. Balloons. So, After so I want to parachute. 
Is that like the self-destruct button? Is your plane like done it's then? It's the exact opposite of a self-destruct you're button. Saving so self your plane. I've seen enough cartoons. This is, no, no, you're saving your life. So there are 13 Cirrus, this is facts. 13 Cirrus is currently flying post parachute deployment. So the, the, par the, the, the parachute uh, stops the, the fall, slows it down, but you, you still hit the ground at the equivalent of, I think a 13 foot free fall. The Whoa. landing gear and the seats have uh, crush zones that are designed to absorb some of that energy. So in theory, the, the plane is total, but there's some people who invested the money if their plane, you know, they're, they really like the plane, they want to get it back flying. So out of, I don't know how many pulls there's been, but it's, it's been, it's been a few, but there are 13 that are flying. So um, like over I multiple think, hundreds, right? Multiple hundreds of lives. I think, I, well, what Cirrus does is they have a list of all the incidents, but the top where they have the data, it says like 260 lives saved. Um, I don't think they actually, as far as I know on their website, I don't think they say we've had 186 planes that fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> be okay. Way to market it. There's just Lynn, some guy Lynn. in marketing at Cirrus stirring a drink with his finger going, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. Uh, a couple people noticing. Uh, I think it was James Hyatt said it in the chat. Uh, he said, uh, so much for that Cirrus sponsorship. Uh, yeah, Cirrus sponsorship down the drain. The drain behind Lynn. Uh, <laughs> disgruntled maple syrup says, and this is a great idea. Lynn learns to fly video series. You're going to teach her how to fly via Zoom? I think that's a yes. good idea. Yeah. We're going to do it all via Zoom. I think Lynn should go take a Discovery flight. That's the, that's what you should do. I already gave her one, man. She turned the plane. You did, I showed you her how the rudders work. You want me Could to you show me how the rudders while. work? Because as a serious pilot, you won't have to use them. But do you, you as a, you're not a serious pilot you know anymore. The thing that people do if they're interested, they can go on a discovery flight, like with a teacher. It sounds more glamorous than it is because they put the word discovery in there. Yeah. You're, you're just, you're just flying the plane from the left side, but there's a guy or girl, probably a girl most of the time. I don't know how many guys and girls are too, but uh, no, but so the discovery flight is where they go up and they, you're in the pilot's seat. Uh, and they're doing the complicated things, and it's basically just to give you that feeling of pulling it off the runway, steering it, and then they land it. And so that, that's kind of probably mostly just a – there's probably a lot of people who want to fly, and they get in a small plane and go, oh, wow, this is bumpy. This is hot. This is gross. I don't like it. Um, but if you get in there, a lot of people, myself included, you have the Discovery flight, and you're like, I'm going to be broke for a long time. Because you really liked it. Yeah, because yeah, then the next thing you know, you're – your family and you buy this thing that we had to we that's actually us moving into it we had to sell the house that's where we live now <laughs> it's a good christmas card that is a, <laughs> oh that is a good christmas card so lynn this plane that brian brought home today goes like 150 50 to 60 miles an hour and the, and that's fast yeah oh yeah so we could use that for work. We could get one of those and use that for work. Oh, that's me and Brian. Oh, there oh, we go. Oh, only a minute left. Um. <laughs> we should probably wrap it up. Uh, oh, you know what? We only lost three live viewers since since the last five minutes. That's good. Well, it's all the cussing that Lynn's doing. The children have to go. <laughs> all right. So before we go, before we wrap up, Lynn... Any question? Any last questions for the world's greatest pilot? Ooh, I feel so put on the spot. I'm thinking about this discovery flight now. Here, okay, here's a good question. When you were gonna learn to fly, how did, like, do you go on, like, dates with instructors and see who's your fit or do you just like I was married go... and so it didn't seem like dating strange women. Oh, I mean, I mean, me. You know, if that's, a, if that's the way to go, I, I wish I would have known. You should you start. You should start an app where it's like a swipe thing. If you find a cute instructor, you swipe right, and you get to fly with that guy. Does how much does your instructor matter? How, oh, uh, that, yeah, that <laughs> that's what matters is the instructor. If you just said like, "Here's the plane, go try it," we wouldn't be well, here talking. I, mean, I know you need one, but like, is there a? Could you have a? I mean, I wonder about like, I would want to have. A instructor that I had a good relationship with, and like, 
you know, it's, does it's that matter? Important. Or do I just take like any old Joe who's no. like, I'll teach you how to fly a plane? It, it matters because most pilots are super, super arrogant and full of themselves and they think oh, they're like. I don't like, want one of those. Then you probably shouldn't fly. All right, well, that's <laughs> done. Uh, I, so, what I did. I, I went around to all the schools and, and asked how much does it cost to get a pilot's license and they were they were really expensive. So what I did was I got on Craigslist, not a joke, and looked searched flight instructor and I found a guy who I could afford and I didn't care what his attitude was like. I wanted to learn to fly and that's the route I went. But uh, definitely there are a lot of people and I bet people in the chat, I'm pointing at the chat, which to me is over here. Uh, a lot of people in the chat will tell you they probably went through multiple instructors because you have some instructors who are just building hours so they can qualify to go to airlines. Um, there are some instructors that are just doing it because they, they want to date uh, students because that the, the whole dating thing you mentioned is real big in the aviation community. <laughs> um, and there are some instructors that are, are just really cocky, jerky people. Um, but yes, you do have to find one that you mesh with. Otherwise, it's, you, can't, you can't learn from someone you don't respect and, or trust or whatnot. So that real answer is... Interview some, get on Craigslist, date like a guy. Before I get California. in an airplane, I want to, like, with that person, I want to, I want to like them. Give them a breathalyzer. There's a lot that, of is, that. that is, that is, here's, here's what I'll say. Also, a good instructor should, like, still set you up with other instructors because you'll get a different, like, point of view on techniques and stuff. So even though I really liked my instructor, uh, Steve, up in Hartford, like I would show up to school sometimes and he'd be like, Hey, you're not riding with me. You're riding with uh, Karen. And I'd be like, Oh cool. It's Karen. And then we had to fly with Karen. And he'd be like, Hey, you're not riding with me today. You're riding with Joe. And I'm like, ah, sweet Joe. Uh, he slapped my hands a couple times, but you know, it taught That's me some funny, things. I was just going to say, Karen doesn't sound like any fun. No one wants to fly with a Karen. She was Karen. a delight. She's so... the one who's doing the hand slapping. <laughs> no, Karen Karen was a delight. Uh, although I will say that halfway through my flight lesson with her, she was telling me about her most recent plane crash, and that didn't really instill a lot of confidence. But uh Most but yeah. recent implying that there were more than one. Yeah. Uh a couple people saying it in the chat, uh <laughs> Brian, sorry. Uh it says uh I'm on my Red Baron modeling, I'm on my third instructor. Uh, oh man, Red Baron. First one went to the airlines. Second one had a heart attack. Was Whoa. it while you were flying, Byron? <laughs> Red Baron modeling. Uh, Sarah Clucky's on her third. James Hyatt's on his or had three instructors uh, when he was in there. Uh, student Aviator said, "I've had four instructors: one main and three on the side." That's uh, spicy. This um, is a complicated business. It is. And now here's the other thing. Greg Hughes says. Uh, Greg says a discovery flight equals a ten thousand dollar free ride. Yep. What do you mean? Because you're gonna love it so much, then you're gonna spend ten thousand dollars to finish. Oh. Ryan, yep. we gotta do more business, yo. See, yeah. she wants to be a pilot. See, it's happening in her brain. Yeah, we're. we're I knew if I got you guys in the same room, you'd help convince her. So here's. I mean, here's the thing. Um. It's a, uh, we should, I know so many instructors in Milwaukee, Lynn, like I, you could, you, I'm sure one of the fine gentlemen that I know would be a great fit for you. Gentle ladies. Maybe Karen's the one for me. I don't know. If, I think, I don't know if she's flying still. I don't know if I know any local, do I lo know any local women flight instructors. There are some up in Hartford, but that's a bit of a haul. Mm. But yeah, anyway, we can talk. Let's explore this further. Let's explore we'll that explore, further. Yeah, we'll guys. take that. What other the business people say? We'll take this offline. We'll we'll <laughs> figure this. We'll figure this out offline. Uh, before we wrap up, do you guys want to play? Well, I don't. I can only do. I think me and Brian. Oh no, wait. I can do this. Hang on. Hang on. We're gonna play. You guys want to play short final? Absolutely. Except it's not gonna be me. Hang on. It's gonna be. It's gonna be clicks. Bam. There's Lynn. What is short final? Well, you I'm gotta glad. just do it. You gotta figure it out as you go. Ask away. I, I'm gonna so so. <laughs> short finals, a minute on the clock. Dramatic music. I'm gonna ask a bunch of uh, airplane weird related questions, and win for you probably won't. I don't know. You probably answer some of them. What? I don't know. You're here. You're. I'm competing with the world's greatest pilot. 
And I'm gonna be the no. Most there's no points. Pilot. I'm building the tomahawk. In there, like an RC modeler guy in the chat. He should appreciate. That. Yeah, Red Baron Modeling's there. Yeah, check that out, Red Baron. Check out that. Wait, I wait, wait. Look, because Red Baron Modeling uh, inspired me. Uh, look, he. I'm building a, a model Piper Cub. Look at that. I glued the, like, I glued the tail on. But like he would probably say like my glue work is a little sloppy. So I'd have to I have to start sanding that stuff. I do that during the Zoom chats sometimes. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Short final. There's Lynn. She's like, why did I offer to come on the show tonight? I if I get one right, I'm gonna be real excited. No, that's not it's not this kind of thing. It's not it's just I it's just you can answer whatever you want. Oh. It's like it's like whose line is anyway. The points aren't real. You you already won. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see what happens. Okay, hang on. Yeah, I, I feel like a winner already. Alright, well you should make it holiday related. If Santa was flying any plane, what kind of plane would Santa fly? Go. A Brian. Piper, Piper Comanche. A slate. <laughs> a slate. Okay. Uh what um Lynn, what's the favorite airport you've ever been to? Uh, Campbellsville, Kentucky, where I picked up a Piper Comanche. No, I, I was asking Lynn. Oh, I thought you said Brian. Bri Skeeple Brian Lynn. Skeeple in Amsterdam because they have the best food and places to shop. All right, Brian, go. Best airport. Uh, best airport? Uh, good Lord. Um, duh. I, I like them all. Hey, Brian, Hertz, Hertz or budget? Uh, it's not going to be budget ever again. <laughs> God. Okay, uh, Lynn, what's the favorite uh, passenger you've ever flown with in an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> I, always, I always ask that one on the show. Uh, Ryan Dombrowski. Well, uh, you could have said Cassidy. Oh, yeah, she's great, too. All right, uh, that, this is... This is, I don't know what the hell happened tonight. It's gone, it's been all over the place. That was fun. You we gotta do it. What happened. I joined your show and. But here's the thing, Lynn. Between me, Brian, and you, everyone's like, make Ryan go away. It's Lynn's <laughs> show now. I feel like it was going well until Lynn showed up and then it got that weird. That's what I'm saying. It didn't everyone, get, no, it's fine. Everyone was av geeking out. It was airplanes, 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 and then blew it up. I'm so sorry. Merry Christmas. It could have been though. the horse head mask, but I think it was. The horse head mask made it a little weird, too. That's what the holiday show is about, though. Hey, real quick, uh, Brian, I forgot to ask you the most important one. Now in your Comanche, is it going to be track up or north up? So this thing has this really great GPS, and when you turn it on, the very first thing that pops up is track up or north up. And before the guy in the right seat, I was like, no, we're just tracking up. We're tracking up. That's how we're doing. Nice. There you go. Rock on. Well, anyway, <laughs> Lynn, thanks for coming on. Brian, thanks for coming on. Thanks to Chris Palmer for putting his uh, his poetry in motion for us, and Ami from the Kelch Aviation Museum for teaching us about how Santa actually delivers the gifts. And a couple other thank yous. There's been a lot of people who've been helping me out with guests this last year. Steph Strickland, Anitra Goddard, people who are just helping, like, like jet pilots and Formula One Reno racers and stuff. And it's like, all those people is just because you guys help and then and then brian has tried to help me a few times and and we've had zero luck yeah it fizzles, it fizzles out but i try i get an e for effort at, at an e or an a even it's on my resume i, I tried really hard and Bembro, i'm happy to be the the matt damon to your jimmy kimmel you get that reference oh yeah yeah sorry sorry ran out of time I can just be perpetually in the green room, and when you need me, yeah, man, I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> I love that. Thank Maybe you so much. Sarah Silverman in that. I don't know how that plays in there. I just saw the video, the song. Wait, that? I don't know if that joke went the way you thought it went. Oh, maybe it didn't. Sorry. What? I don't know something. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> if she's the Matt Damon and you're, and you're oh, the... Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you meant... If I'm the Matt Damon, you're the Sarah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yes. I got that confused. 
Yeah, I yes. thought she was Jimmy Kimmel. No, no, she's Matt Damon. So then, if yeah. wow, it's, it, it's getting awkward. This is but I think great our television. Is, is, is growing. This is excellent television. All right, everybody else in. The- I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna turn your cameras off. Bye, guys. Everybody else. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. All the holidays. I hope you have just the best one. I hope that you hug your family. That you stay safe. Cause guys, it's getting crazy out there. It's getting crazy out there. So stay safe. Make good choices. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Dad. Um, and and most mostly. Uh, just thank you so much again. It's been a truly epic year of guests and adventure. And I, without this show, I mean, I had a whole new career spawn this year from this show uh, with my friends over at National Stole. And so it's all thanks to all of you at home. And I'm just so, so grateful to have you, uh, especially those folks, the, the all the subscribers, all the folks, the Patreon squad, the Super Aero Squadron. Uh, you guys just like, man, fills me a little bit with the feels. So thank you so much for all of that. Uh, the show is going to take a couple weeks off so I can hang out with my family over the holidays. And you guys can too. Uh, there'll probably be a little content here and there that pops up. So, you know, slide into my DMs or whatever. But I'll be coming back in January with some new exciting guests and we're just going to keep this train. We're going to keep the, this train. It's an airplane show. We're going to keep this plane cruising at a comfortable altitude <laughs> with your tray tables up and locked. I need to sign off and go get more rum. Join the Patreon thing, and you can join us in the Zoom in a second. All right, everybody. Have a great holiday. We'll see you in a couple weeks. <laughs>